Hey guys, so I just did a video called um, <laughs> Stop Making Biscuits and, and Stop Giving Up the Biscuits and it was primarily around the women but as again, again I said that, you know, that can be for the men as well. Um, what I want to do though is do something very briefly for the men. Um, I'm not a man, so there's a lot of things that I don't understand and I don't know and Really, how can a man get advice from a woman about how to be a man? But that is not what I'm here for. What I'm here to do is give something that the Lord has impressed upon my heart to share. Um, because one of the things, the platform for this video is for everybody, men and women. And it's not, this is not a platform for women. Um, it's pro-women and we're against men and men are dogs. I don't believe in anything like that, okay? So I want to share a little bit. This is uh, what the Lord gave me here is called men of God. Listen to your father. Men of God, listen to your father. And with your father, I'm talking about a capital F, the Lord. Now, the role of men is a lot more complex than that of a woman, I think. You're expected to be providers, um, strong yet gentle. Um, and when you're walking in Christ, you're expected to love your wife as Christ loved the church and that he gave his life. And then you're also expected to bring up your children, but at the same time, not provoke your children to wrath, as it says in the word of God. So there is just a lot of different things that men of God are expected to do. Now, if we grow up as as growing up young men most of men are men from their time they're boys they are taught to be tough they don't cry you know suck it up and that is something really that is from the enemy you understand that because if you look at the beginning um, with God when he created Adam at no point even when Adam messed up and and uh obeyed eve i'm gonna move this a little bit and obeyed eve uh, or followed eve with biting the apple he was not harsh with him in the sense of he never called him out his name he didn't bring down lightning and thunder or did anything like that to either one of them okay so what is the point i'm saying so the biggest thing one of the things for the for man is to love his wife to love his wife the way christ loved the church and if you look at the way christ loved the church you can read throughout starting from matthew on how much he loves the church and God made sure he interjected that he gave his life. Um, and so one thing, if you grew up being taught to be tough and to hold your feelings in, it's going to be hard to love and to know how to love and give your emotions and balance all this. You have to love your wife. You have to love your, 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 you know, all of this good stuff, your children. How do you do that? If you've never been taught that or you've been taught to be tough and to be whatever. The other thing, um, with that is in the garden, you know, the Lord, um, the man was providing, he was creating, he was walking in his power and his ability and naming all the animals as God gave him that ability and gave him that to do. So you must always be setting your hands to do something that is constructive, no matter what it is, even if it's whatever the job is. Some people may look at it and say, well, you know, I don't have a major job. I don't have a position, but whatever it is that God has given you to do, he has put it on your hands to be working, to be uh, making and creating and, and, and naming and, 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 and being uh, productive. If you've never been taught that, or if you've never had that example, you wouldn't know how to do that either. You'll be taught that you need to get things quickly. You need to get things fast. You need to get things now. And if you're not holding this particular position or whatever, then you're nothing. Because society already places it to say, you know, if you just working at uh, church's chicken, you know, you ain't about nothing. You ain't doing nothing. You're working. You understand that? The Bible talks about the body is a temple of the living God and there's stuff in there that tells a man to avoid the way of a harlot, to avoid the way of that woman who has, who's, the, who's impudent in her, 
in her mannerisms and she comes and she traps and she tells you my husband has gone on a long journey come lay with me and yet these men do not know that her bed leads down to the way of hell how do you in today's society with all the pornography and the sex i mean my goodness <laughs> you can't eat chicken wings without seeing girls walking around in little shorts with their booty out so how do you do this as a man i can't tell you but what i can tell you is this what the lord has given to me listen to your father your heavenly father, men of God, the only way that you're going to become the man that you need to be in God and find out how to get those crooked areas and ways and habits within you, get those things straight is to go before the Lord. You have to submit yourself to God. You see, we're in a society where men are taught to be strong and brawn and uh, yes, you're created for that, that you can protect your family, that you can protect yourself in your household, because really you are, men will challenge each other. And, and there's always, you know, um, and there's so many obstacles and things that you will face as a man. But remember, you were created first for a reason. You're created first for a reason. And you were the person that after God created everything, he put you there and put you there to name everything. And then he gave you the gift of woman. There are things that have to be done in order. A lot of times, men, you want the woman and then you work on the stuff. And however, God puts it on your heart. But the thing is, if you're not being led by the Holy Spirit and God is not leading you, not leading you in your life, you know what's going to happen? You're going to follow the ways of the world. How many virgin men are still out there? I don't know. You know, there's not a lot. There are not a lot of virgins out there. A lot of men are being introduced to sex early. Um, a lot of times it's because you accidentally find it, right? Sometimes you may find a magazine at your uncle's house, your daddy's house, a friend's house. You may be witness to seeing how the men in your family act, how they handle women. You may over here you know some uh stuff going on between a man and a woman and just things that you see and what you hear when you go to your friend's house and that's how you are taught and that's how you learn things and then you know your body starts to change and whatever and you could be introduced to it you can be introduced it illegally which means somebody that's supposed to be watching you and keeping you is doing more than they should do to you it could be things in the area of you know maybe someone you were molested by a woman a man a cousin and so you have to understand and people don't understand the greatest ignorance that the enemy puts on us men and women people in general is that you totally be ignorant to the spirit world and you think that everything is that's happening is just you take it at face value you don't think spiritually or you don't think too deeply about it but you have to realize men of god that your battle is not against flesh and blood but it's against principalities and rulers and the powers of the rulers of this world and the only way you're going to learn this is to be putting on the full armor of God that you're able to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. How are you going to do that? You cannot do it until you listen to your father. You get before God. You trust the Lord that he can talk to you and he can speak to you because you're obeying another God when you're doing everything else that you're doing, when you're having illicit sex, when you're meeting with a bunch of different women and sleeping with them and using them and doing whatever you want to do and you know all these things but you're opening up yourself as you sleep with someone you're sleeping with her and you're picking up her spirits and whatever her sexual partner she maybe she's in a relationship whatever that man is doing and whatever whoever that man is with you understand it's there's this ugly spider web and you can get out there and you do certain things and it it and you sleep with these people and then suddenly you find yourself having these habits these disposition you may be more cranky where did this come from you may find that you want to look at you never watch pornography now you're watching it or you watched it but you wasn't watching this type of pornography now you're interested in that your thoughts things are going on because whoever you've joined yourself to whatever spirits they carry and whatever spirits that man she's been dealing with carries 
that steps into you. If he has had a problem where he's an angry, angry short-tempered man, all of a sudden you are not, now you are. You have to think of where you got those from. It's a lot of times when you are connected to different women and sleeping with different people, that's sleeping with different men, that's messing with this dude, and you have men that's in, you know, same-sex relationships or whatever. I always tell people the spirit of uh, homosexuality and lesbianism, it's not a choice it's a spirit. It's a spirit. So you can sit there and be like, I've never been with a man. I'll never get with a man. I'll never get with a woman. And then you see the enemy will slowly take you down this road. This is something that was revealed to me not too long ago. And I shared it with someone. Um, yeah. But it's not a choice. It's a spirit. So when you're connecting to different people who are connected in different types of lifestyles, whether they are same-sex relationships, um, pedophiles, um, things of that nature. When you're sleeping with a bunch of different people and you're not obeying God, that stuff comes on you. And sometimes by the grace of God that he doesn't allow certain things to happen to you or allow you to go that route. But you have to realize the more that you're out there and you're just going off of what you've known and what you've understood and what you think being a man is, if you're not following your father and if he has not or following the principles of maybe men who are of God, not, uh, you know, there's godly men and then there's men of God. And there's one that they just have that title and then there's one that they humble and get themselves before God and they're going to tell you what the word says and lead you in that way. You got to know the difference. But the biggest thing is listen to your father. Listen to your heavenly father in heaven. If you don't know or understand what it is or you have failed at being a husband, a father, or you have these bad habits, you have a lot of broken relationships behind you you need to allow the lord to deal with that i am not in a position as a woman to tell you how to be a man because i am not one i don't experience what you experience i'm not made up like you so how can i tell you how to be that and that is why a lot of times in relationship when there are these bad relationships or relationships that they're on the fritz and the woman is telling the man what he need to be, he's not trying to hear that. Even if he's not doing what he needs to do, that man does not want to hear that because it's never meant for us as women to be telling you what you need to be doing. We're there to be a help meet and to advise, but you're already in the driver's seat. So if anything we're telling us what you're already thinking about and maybe you get an opinion from us and a thought and it may kind of confirm where you were like, okay, I'll show that, see, whatever. And we will work together, but it is never for women to say, this is what you need to be. And you need to, as a man, and you're not going to accept that either. And we've all been guilty of it. We've been in a relationship where things have been to a point where you get so angry and so upset that you are saying something that you should not be saying and vice versa. So the thing is, men of God, a man who don't know Christ, you need to know him. He's a wonderful savior. Know him as your personal savior. Know that God can teach you everything you need to know about being a man of God, a man who provides, a man who does things, and he can open doors for you where you have those jobs, whether you qualify or not. However, it's good to qualify too. He can help you in those ways. He can show you how to make amends, how to provide for your children, how to do, to build from the little things, and he brings you into greater things. But the first thing with that is always obeying the Lord and doing the things that he has told you to do. There are men who have gone through things. You've tried to be a good guy to a woman and she dogs you out. She's using you. You're paying all her bills. You're doing stuff like that. I'm here to tell you that is not how that is supposed to go. You're not supposed to be paying no woman's bills. You're not supposed to be paying for her to get nothing done. And women may feel that way. No, if he's not your husband, he's not supposed to be paying for stuff like that. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. No, he's not. If you have children, it's something else. But the thing about it is the stuff is just being, the thing of paying and buying people's stuff is being done so often outside of the organization of marriage 
that it's just become an expectation and very common and a lot of people are getting hurt because you're truly not in a covenant relationship. So it's like the word of God says, it's like when you go out there and you have children all over the place, your money is all over the place because it was meant for you to be in one household with one woman. So the thing is, stop getting your heart broken for those of you who are doing that. You can't buy yourself into love. Any woman that requires you to pay for her bills and do whatever for her to be in a relationship with you is really not worth it. And she herself is broken because that's what she has been taught. If you have a woman that drives you to a place that you want to go kill somebody and you're acting unseemly or she's hiding your children from you and playing those games with your children, you need to step, step back, man, God. Men, do the things that you need to do. Are you supposed to take care of your children? Yes. But you have to learn... You have a lot of people who don't want to follow the laws of, you know, getting paternity done and following the laws and, and going through Texas or whatever child support office you're at and helping them to help you. They're content with fighting and going through stuff and, the, and, and ladies hiding babies and hiding whatever and you and his dad and men don't allow yourself to get into that. Step back from that. Take care of your children. Let God lead you and show you the things that you need to do and how to deal with that situation. And a lot of times, sometimes those women are hurt by you, right? You've done something, you've hurt them, but that does not give them the right to use the children as pawns. But a lot of times it's hurt. So the thing is, I always tell people, and I'll tell you, men of God, get before the Lord. Let's look at what you've been taught about being a man growing up. Look at the things that you've done through your life. Consider the women that you have hurt, the things that you have gone through, whether they you feel they deserve it or not. Renounce those things. Ask the Lord to cleanse you. Remember, your body is a temple of the living God. It is holy. It should be holy and acceptable. You shouldn't be putting things in it and connecting it to things that is contrary to what the word of God says you need to be or you should be. If you have never been taught how to be a man, if you grew up in a household where it just wasn't great, you were abused, things happened, you didn't have a family, you were, not a, you were abandoned, that is sad and it is awful. But just know that you don't have to be a product of that environment. God is a God that specializes in the rejected, in the broken down, and in honesty because he himself was rejected and broken down. The Lord was born, you know, of all the environments that Jesus could have been born in. You know, he could have been born, I mean, Joseph, Moses, these guys at some point was in a palace and with, with royalty for a bit, right? But guess what? Jesus was born under circumstances where um, Mary had an immaculate conception, but of course the people did not truly believe that. And at some point, Joseph even was going to put her aside because now she's pregnant while they're betrothed, while she's engaged to him and he has not touched her. How did you get pregnant? So God, Jesus came into that. And truth be told, even though there's no uh, too much history of it in the Bible, if at all, he was proud of that child that they considered to be, you know, illegitimate because she was pregnant before. We don't even know if Joseph was your daddy. You understand? He came in circumstances and situations that was less than perfect. He was also a carpenter's son. I mean, he could have been born to someone that was wealthy, but he was a carpenter's son. And maybe carpenters were doing good back then, but I don't think so. Okay? That's not, well, that's not one of the most prestigious positions. He was not. And guess what? He was abused. He was treated poorly by people. He was throughout his walk in the Bible. Start from Matthew. I encourage you to read that and see how people treated him. And ultimately, he knew that he was going, he was born to die for us. So see, Jesus has had some not so perfect beginnings, even though he was a son of God and could have had a choice and sent down like a surrogate or something. I, I sent down like a... <laughs> <clears throat> I can't remember that movie they had. What's it called? Surrogate? Where like you could sit at home and you had this little robot that would go out and do things for you, go to work for you. Yeah, he could have done a lot of things, but he chose to walk a simple life. The son of man had nowhere to lay his head. So you see, he does these things because, see, people 
who have been broken and has short beginnings and small beginnings and terrible beginnings. And you may God say, why did God do this to me? You think more of, why did he put you there? What is the purpose of that? You have to realize, guys, you're not what you see in the mirror. You're a spirit. And you have a specific purpose in your life why you were born that way or, or not born that way born in that situation that is what I meant where things happen maybe had an alcoholic father mother that was on drugs and you have to realize she and he they are a product of something they experienced you can be the difference I'm here to tell you that God can change you he can make you into that man you're meant to be you don't have to go to prison if you went he can change you if you lost your family he can rebuild it it may or may not be that, but you have to trust that he can do everything. You're not educated. You don't have it all. You don't have it all together. Trust your father. Listen to your father. Get a Bible. You can look up things online. I use Google sometimes to look up, let's say I'm trying to find a scripture about um, uh, forgiveness, and it will show me all the scriptures that has about forgiveness, and I look for it in my Bible. But get a Bible. Get one that you can understand. If it's not a King James, then get like a, you know, new NIV or whatever he leads you to. But the first thing is you pray and ask the Lord to lead you and to show you who you are. Because you are something. I don't care what anyone has said to you and what you've done. But the first thing you do is get before God. You ask him to forgive you. You ask him to teach you. Do not trust... Tr <laughs> what was that? Do not... Treat the Lord like a entity, a thing, and realize that while he is God and he is mighty, that he cares about you. He knows what you got on right now. He knows where you're sitting. He knows you're watching this video. He knows what type of phone you got. Know that if you allow the Lord to come in that way, and it may take a while, but if you are faithful in praying, saying, Lord, I need you in my life. If you don't know how to pray, just talk. Invite him in. Accept him as your Lord and Savior if you're not saved. Romans 10 to 9 says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and was raised the third, raised the third day and is sitting at the right hand of the Father, you shall be saved. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. You do that and then allow the Holy Spirit to do the rest and lead you to where you need to be. I'm here to tell you that God will change your life. God will make you into the man of God you need to be. God will teach you how to be a man. God will show you the areas that you need to work on. God will show you how to be a provider. God will bring you the right wife. He will bring you a wife who will care for you and love you the way that you deserve. Somebody who's not flitting and running and running all over the streets and doing different things. A wife who has boundaries. A wife who can submit to you the way that the Lord ordained for a woman to submit to a man who loves the Lord, who will lead you, will be an asset to you. Don't look at what you've lost. Don't look at who's not there anymore. Trust your heavenly father. I tell you these things because I've had to do that. Don't accept these knockoffs that the enemy will try to bring to you. Don't accept these relationships that has no walls and boundaries and any and anything goes in your relationship. There are women out there who loves the Lord. There are women out there who are getting before the Lord and waiting for their man of God. There are women out there who knows how to submit themselves to their husbands and not thinking it is a prison. There are women out there who encourage you in the things of God. But you have got to make yourself into who God wants you to be so you will not damage that woman or open up yourself to a woman who will damage you. Trust and know that the Lord loves you. He will teach you how to love. He will undo all the things that you have taken up and, and grown up on and the beliefs and the, the norms for you and make you into the vessel that he's chosen for you. Remember, the human that you see in the mirror is not you. The spirit within you is who you truly are. So allow your heavenly father to orchestrate and to teach you and to lead you into who you need to be as a man. All right. I hope this helps you guys out some. Have a great day. Bye.